perfect outcome to all things is a show. situation there's a blessing somewhere come gather brothers and sisters and we'll see that it is there i need you you need me (laughs) yes you do and that's how our happiness is guaranteed (laughs) take it boys (laughs) and now in all your doings be you blessed Through you is ushered in a world unseen, unheard, yet truly there. Holy are you, and in your light the world reflects your holiness. For you are not alone and friendless. I give thanks for you, and join your efforts on behalf of God, knowing that they are on my behalf as well, and for all those who walk to God with us. To all things is a show. A perfect outcome to all things is a show. I get stronger every day because my faith leads the way. A perfect outcome to all things is a show. <laughs> A perfect outcome to all things is a short. We go it. <laughs> we are. Can you tell we're excited about being here and being having you with us? Ah, uh, cause wow, I we know. are not alone and friendless. Turns as out, Cindy says, "I love us." I love us. <laughs> I know. It's just wonderful to be here in the sanctuary. We've really, we've been here all afternoon. Um, it was wonderful. We always usually are, um, but we didn't know today. Like the um, the uh, homily was amazing, of course, and then we stayed for all the sharing and. Uh, we got to a point where Ann was sharing and asked us to write down answers to did call a man, call him B, Connie. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't exactly Connie's know, call a man. No, call no, me. I know. But it was, she, this was so interesting. My current mask or what I want others to see me as, and then under no circumstances do I want to be seen as. So, you, you know, you draw a line. And then put, you know, put your answers there. And boy, that was really, really helpful. I saw where I'm tripping myself up. How about that? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, really, it's, really it's really developing helpful. that paradigm. You've got versions of one, you've got things on one list that are actually on the other list as well. Uh-huh. It's the coin, right? It's this, it's recognizing the paradigm, not yeah. the one list or the bat, one list or another list. It's like recognizing. That was cool. the entire paradigm. Yeah, it was really cool. And then after that was Qigong, which I know. We, had, we had never done. I missed Qigong. Did you miss Qigong? <laughs> I know no, everybody we did was. It. Yeah, yeah, we, we didn't have, miss it. We did it. No, I know what, but <laughs> it hasn't been. It hasn't been. The, it hasn't been back around in a while. Oh, well, right, right, right. Well, I was so thrilled to see it, and mm-hmm. then uh, so what a day we've we've uh, had. Here. All that deep breathing. Did you do? All, <laughs> did did you do the, all the all the Qigong and the? Yeah. And oh, interestingly, I know. I know. Enough, yeah. interestingly enough, during the Qigong and the deep breathing and the bit of movement, I uh, revisited a trauma. Uh-huh. I know. And Stuff works. Yeah, it really works. And so it was interesting because this week, and uh, uh, let's see. Shiny says Shakti is another. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, got it. For yes. Qi. Yeah, Shakti is another mm-hmm. word for Qi. Um, 
so it was interesting this like week because all, um, uh, I had some very disappointing news happen to me in terms of uh, you know happen come into my uh, come into my awareness. awareness. <laughs> it didn't happen to me. I brought it in, uh, but it was uh, you know disapp- it was very disappointing, and um, I had attached all this meaning to it. So uh, Sina directed me to. Yes, and it really helped. It was wonderful. Um, The Superconductor video, which I had not seen before, but I have seen this teacher before. His name is Leo, I believe, but I can't remember. So, uh, I don't know if you want to put the link, if you have it handy in the chat, that's cool. Um, Leo Gura. Oh, he was really good. He was really good, and I have seen other works of his, but this one really spoke to me, the Superconductor method of... Um, dealing with your emotions and it's actually what we've been practicing around here but I was really you know (laughs) intent on it like um, just really feeling them Mm -hmm. and going deep into your emotions we're gonna talk a little bit more about that about mm -hmm. uh, uh, that feeling what happens this 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 connecting the the ideas of threat with Mm. the ideas of being swept away Mm. You know, by something, you know, that's kind of the, the putting some uh, uh, ways of uh, feel some feeling tones and some way of understanding. And like this, you know, these lists is like mm-hmm. this mask and how mm-hmm. and how these all these different things are working together f- for either our healing or our further sleep. You know, oh, and, and right. it's our attitude in which we look at the world and what we're talking about, our spiritual aspirations mm. and what we're what we're doing. And are you, you do you want to be here? Mm. You know, do we want to be here? I mean, well, when so I read what we do yeah. with that, how how that how that how that's lived, really, uh-huh. you know, because so, the answer is sometimes uh-huh. yes, the answer is sometimes no. I don't <laughs> right now. I don't want to be here. It's like this is not where I want to be, right? You know, and that's so. what I was experiencing this week. And then uh, after the Chikong, uh brought it up to me again, and then I was whew, breathing through it and feeling it, and wow. I'm just in a really interesting, vulnerable place right now. So I'm just open to what happens today. In through the nose, <laughs> out through the mouth. Yeah, and another thing I want to mention, uh, of course, is Sounds of Awakening is tonight at 8. And I hope you do uh, join us because my friend Adam is a lovely, lovely person. Mm-hmm. And he actually helped me through this moment also after um, we had a sound check. And after... Um, Oh, uh, no. Sina had shared that video with me. Uh, we had a sound check me and Adam, and he was actually reminding me of rest, accept, and trust <laughs> in his own words. It was so great. So, you know, all things work together, you know, for the good. And it's just very, very, very interesting. And I just love, I just love this. Mm-hmm. I love this conscious exploration. So let's see, we, do you want to do the, let's do the lessons first because we have a song, uh, oh, a sing, uh, uh, sing along that I, goes with Because I know lessons. everybody is doing the Course in Miracles <laughs> lessons every day, right? You do, like, like we love them. <laughs> we, we love, what's funny is like recently it, it was, do this as much as you can possibly think about it. Uh-huh. Every 10 minutes would be ideal and you're yeah. going, <laughs> But it's just minutes. like I said, then you begin to realize how often mm-hmm. we do have habits that are every mm-hmm. ten minutes we remind ourselves of something, mm-hmm. and and that yeah. self talk. So she's right. she's actually beginning to get us to realize that this isn't an unusual thing that we we know how we already know how to do this. Mm-hmm. We just don't use this skill to uh, 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 heal, and we use it to stay asleep. So these mm-hmm. these lessons are really good, and it reminds us of that because she's talking to a human being who doesn't who, who's becoming discovering it's divine. Yeah, so that's so exciting. The lesson thirty five yeah. is my mind is part, part of God's. Of I am very holy, mm. which can be kind of difficult to accept, but she leads us through it. Keep going. Can you? Can yeah, you that was a few it? days uh, ago. That lesson thirty five. Lesson thirty five. So the next day was thirty six is. My holiness envelops everything I see. So I have an enveloping holiness. Wow. That's amazing. I have an enveloping holiness. My holiness envelops everything that I see. You are holy because your mind is part of God's. (laughs) And because you are holy, your sight must be holy as well. Yeah, maybe. 
So <laughs> we could listen to that. We could listen to that. Go to the next one. Uh -huh, next okay. One. Uh, 37. 37. 37 is, is my holiness blesses the, the world. There, there's, the, there's a conclusion. It was like, oh, mm. if the holiness blesses everything I see, then my holiness is blessing the world, that I am mm. actually not a burden uh, or dispensable or mm. disposable. Um, what mm. I am is more my holiness blesses. And she, this she gets very specific. She, so she's, cool. she's, 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 she's going to get under, she tries to get, get under your skin a little bit. I think when she says my holiness bl blesses this chair, my holiness blesses it's that window, window, my holiness blesses, blesses this body. body. So that, how about that for triggering? You know, my holiness blesses you mm -hmm. name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my holiness blesses, blesses you. you. Yeah. Everything in the world. So mm -hmm. that's the responsibility for our holiness leads to a whole nother look at the world. And she's trying to get us to see we already are participating in that when we're uh, 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 let go and see it, the world as it is. So we, and we then next. the next lesson, lesson number 38, there is nothing my holiness cannot do. All right. And the very right. first line says, your holiness reverses all laws of the world. Period. <laughs> Wow. There's nothing my holiness cannot, cannot do. do. Right. And then 39, right after that, my holiness is my salvation. If guilt is hell, what is, what its, is its opposite? opposite? Like the text for which this workbook <laughs> was written, the ideas used for the exercises are very simpler, simple, very clear, and, and totally, totally unambiguous. unambiguous. <laughs> She's so funny. <laughs> I, cause we want to say, oh, no, no, this can't mean what I mm -hmm. think it means. Mm -hmm. She's not telling the truth. That's not literally true. Of course it is. Yeah, my holiness is my salvation. And she says, don't talk yourself out of this. Don't yeah. water it down. Yeah. Don't water this down. So let's see. The next day, lesson 40 is, <laughs> I, I am blessed, blessed as a son of God. We're going to play uh, my video. I wrote a song <laughs> based on this. We're going to play <laughs> what that are the odds? video here in a minute. I am blessed. With our guest from Sounds of Awakening mm -hmm. in it. Adam is in it. Adam so I am blessed as a son, son of God. God. And then? And then... God, God goes, goes with, with me wherever, wherever I, I go. go, which I also wrote a song about. <laughs> and then after that, 42, God, God is, is my strength. strength. Vision is his Okay, gift. see, we're getting to, this the two sentences, one of those first 50 mm -hmm. lessons that have two sentences if, is them. I think there are only like four. Mm -hmm. God is my strength. Vision is, is his, his gift. gift. So if I rely on what I'm good at being God, what is if I rely on what is real, then I get to see what is true vision, what is actually reality and live in reality. God means I can do it. My because I share my thoughts with God, I can do it. Yeah. Okay. So after that, lesson forty-three is, which is today, today as God we arrive. is God is my source. I cannot see apart from Him. God is, is my, my source. source. Yay. Oh, hi, Arizona. Hey. Oh, I know. Looking, Arizona's looking joined very us. pretty. You look so cute. I love I that little hat. I it's like adorable. hats. adorable. Yay. So today's lesson is God is my source. So and what do you think we're going to do? <laughs> you may or may not know this song, but we learned this uh, in... Um, I don't, th I don't I think, think it was you. Did you yeah, I think it, it was... Did no, no. It was it? at a church that we used to go to, but I can't remember... Um, was that Sanctuary or Unity? I think it was called Sanctuary, yeah. So, um, scoot back just a little so I have some room. And if you can see, yeah, just scoot over just a tad so I can play. Right out of the frame. <laughs> just right you're out not, of the uh, no, frame. not. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to have some room here to play. Okay. So it's very simple. It goes like this. You love God this. is my you love source. This. God is my power. God, God is, is everything, everything I need. I need. So I give thanks. So I give thanks for all my blessings. For all my blessings. God is everything I need. God is everything I need. I love it. So we're going to start out slow, then we're going to build up to mm -hmm. a little faster tempo. Uh -huh. So here we go. Uh -huh. Everything I need God is my soul 
my power. God is everything I need. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you for being a part of my source. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I love that. We used to just dance and sing. There was a band at that church. We would dance and sing. Mm -hmm. It was very much fun. Yeah. So wanted to bring that to you. Memories. Yeah, Memories. what fun it is. The it's corners of my mind. <laughs> Misty. Oh, oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and Memories. breathe and om. And um, today, I usually take this moment or in the last few weeks to... Uh, uh, a read from and uh, do an extemporaneous uh, singing <laughs> of <laughs> one of the hey, George. Radiant Sutras. Hi, George. So nice to see you. Glad you're here. Um, but I'm not going to do that right now because I'm going to wait until Sounds of Awakening because oh, no. actually today's banter verse is 1516 and I worked all week on um, God gave me this melody for it and I really 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 like it it's very unusual and i'm gonna i'm gonna save it for um for sounds of awakening because uh you know i think it it works really well in there right now we're just going to breathe and ohm and then i'm gonna share my song i am blessed uh, a video of our performance of it uh, with adam singing with me so here we go let's breathe breathe and ohm together again on this Sunday, beautiful, beautiful Sunday in the sanctuary. We are here co-creating this infinite circle of unconditional love. This unconditional love where everything is allowed, everything we like, everything that we do not like. Ah. We just bring it on all here, knowing that we are blessed as the child of God. Our holiness blesses the world. Our holiness is our salvation. And we are blessed. And so it is. And uh, we're going to sing a little song about how blessed we all are. Oh, it's breezy. Oh, yes, it's a breezy song. Okay, here we go. Let's <laughs> keep it breezy.
Blessing. We have a few more blessings that have joined the room. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Just felt like you were there, wasn't it? Just felt like you were there. Oh gosh, that was so good. I, I liked that. We had fun with that. So that was Adam in the front row. Uh, we're gonna um, play another. Uh, if we get to it at the end of this hour, we're gonna play another little piece of a video that Adam is into. But yay! I know we're still dancing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, which was based actually on Burt Bacharach, who, uh, oh. who passed away this week. So uh -huh. that's interesting too. Uh -huh. There's another little connection. Interesting. Oh. Well, we are. If you're um, following along, as I know you are, being really <laughs> outstanding course course students. Uh, if you're following along, that you're as you read the as you read the course diligently every year, you find yourself reading 12.8 pages a week, and you wind up on chapter four. Right, we're on chapter four. Uh, the illusions of the ego. This this is the second week we've got. With uh, 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 talking about the ego, uh, the you know the first one. Uh, uh, so this is the second week talking about the ego. So she's going to give us uh, another. The, the first one was, "Are you teachable? Become like mm. teachable, right?" So and uh, what are you going to trust? Where you where are you going to use your creativity? Uh, recognize the recognize where you've uh, gone off the track. Where the solutions evaluate what are what your what our own thinking and the paradigm was, which is a lot what we were talking about yeah. this afternoon. Yeah. When you look at what's what I'm thinking, the thinking mind and its solutions, you know, and what it draws on. So the course of miracles. So chapter one of course of miracles. I'll remind you. I'm sure you already know this is is all is all about the real. What is actually real. What is true, but cannot be changed, right? She calls those miracles because mm. it's true. It's the way things actually are. You're in the flow. Chapter two is what the problem is. The universe wants your <laughs> happiness. Yes, Sidus says the universe wants your happiness. Woo it does. Now, so why don't we live? So could we could be living that way. And of course, miracles is like saying it actually is the world wants to do the, you want is a cooperative component with your happiness yeah. your perfect happiness mm -hmm. is the way the course puts it so why don't we participate <laughs> in it well we don't know what the real world is we don't know what the problem is we think that we think we're separate you know and that's a good thing we actually think that's a a, a, a feature <laughs> right we actually think that we want that to be true we've been talking about that all day we were, how much we yeah. keep choosing mm -hmm. separation we keep choosing these sort of thoughts and paradigms of separation so <laughs> why we were making this <laughs> list over here <laughs> so number three we're getting to as well is is like what are your goals the way we talk about it around here is what is your spiritual aspiration yeah it's like what are you what's the color what's the filter what's the thing that you bring to every situation your presence what you want how you your perspective, how you look at things, you know, and the way we like to talk about it. And uh, we were listening to uh, a wrote his wonderful uh, uh, sermon this morning. And was like, oh yeah, you're right. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. It isn't something you do on weekends or you know to mm -hmm. you know you know and <laughs> stay out of trouble with your mother-in-law. You know, it is to it's it's for our stay own. Out of trouble with your mother. -in -law. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> so, so it's like it's how to it's like what do i want from the world what experience do i want to have in the world mm. i'm making the choice and like the you know the introduction to the course of miracles says this is the course of miracles mm. it is a required course only the time that you take it is voluntary the course you know <laughs> it's the the course you don't get to elect the curriculum but you get to elect the order and the time that you want to take all these lessons mm. how gentle is that gentle right? healing gentle healing so we come to so we come to chapter four, and she wants to talk about the we want she wants us to be able to begin to recognize as a fundamental step after we say what do we want in the world, be able to recognize what is actually in opposition to that. It's not there isn't really anything opposition to what the will of God is, but we perceive the ego and what the egos want. In we see the world dual, with duality and opposition, and I want and I'm against, and if I have, you don't, and all those kind of things. She recognizes that because there's an ego thought system, this this way of looking and thinking and believing in the world that you keep creating that we're going to call the ego, but that actually, of course, really doesn't exist. But we need to be able to recognize it as not us in order to be able to quickly let it go. Mm. The quicker we can look at it and recognize it, 
not be frightened by it, not be triggered by it, but say, oh, the aware, I can do, I can look at this, I can heal. And this, in the illusions, chapter four, the illusions of the ego, she's going to talk about as the body, the ego, body, illusion. Okay? Now, the image I used for this is uh, uh, your favorite royal images. I used carved, I used carved old figurines of the, of the Chinese emperor and empress. You know, because they're in tarot cards and all this. The archetype of the emperor and the empress, the king or the queen, king. It's it's the, in one aspect, it's the idealized version of human existence. They even call Jesus the king. They oh, call yeah. you know they they even call Father the king. They even you know the 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 God the king, king, Lord of lords and King of kings mm -hmm. and all this stuff. There's a real way in the which the language, especially Western culture, chooses to do kings and queens and emperors and empresses, you know, and monarchs, as held out as an ideal form, as an ideal humanity way of an idealized perfect human, right? The, they even call you know the 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 sun god. The sun god is the emperor. Right, the child of heaven is the Pharaoh. Right, we yeah. under we, we this this is an, an iconography that humanity really does understand really well. But it's also this this executive function you have in your brain about what you're going to give your attention to. Mm. Interesting. The emperor and the empress. Like, mm. it's, like, it's like who's making the decision here? Who's the executive function that's turning your head one way or another? Or your attention what's occupying your life force energy what's occupying and directing your creative energy mm. okay okay well, that sounds so that's what chapter four <laughs> is about to begin be able to realize uh, when uh, we're giving our energy to to situations things uh, uh and conditions that don't serve our awakening or our like you was saying our perfect happiness if the mm. world is trying to give us our perf perfect happiness what are we doing no not right now i'm busy i'm busy suffering i just couldn't take one more moment of happiness <laughs> I'm, I'm over here busy suffering thank you oh uh, yeah well sometimes i choose to right. do that to myself mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. for sure and that's okay mm -hmm. we got six paragraphs here and she wants to talk to us about the ego body illusion mm. okay and we're going to talk a lot about uh, we're going to talk. We're going to continue this discussion we've been having all day about feeling threatened. Hmm. Okay. So with that idea of the emperor empress feeling threatened, the, what, looking at what the ego and how to recognize the ego thought system, and this developing of a, a trust and a guide as we see we the ego's thought system is laid bare as something we do not want. Hmm. So there's six paragraphs, mm -hmm. and it's pretty simple. Before. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and and reminders that if you want to put anything uh -huh. in the chat, we're, or anything, you know, we're we're back and forth between mm -hmm. screens, or if there's something that you want to say, just if, yeah, if you've been unmute. ripped by the spirit, <laughs> unmute and tell us all about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here we go. Uh, all things work together for good. Period. There are no exceptions except in the ego's judgment. Right. Ta da. The ego exerts maximal vigilance about what it permits into awareness. And this is not the way a balanced mind holds together. This is not the way a balanced mind holds together. That's really, really My true. My child. Yeah. Padawan. Um, the ego raises control rather than sanity to predominance. Sane judgment would inevitably judge against the ego. Okay. So she's telling you, you have an, un, you, you know, when you have an unbalanced mind, mm -hmm. of course you do. You're uncomfortable, mm -hmm. right? We said earlier, you, you, you got it wrong. You're now you're unbalanced, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? So you obviously didn't start seeing correctly, right? And she gives us the attic, the ego's primary methods mm -hmm. an attitude that this should not be. Like, mm -hmm. this should not be whatever it is. You know, mm -hmm. I shouldn't, I, you know, haircuts shouldn't be $40. <laughs> you know, was, was the one I was doing today. Yesterday. I'm bald. Right I'm here. looking at haircuts around here. This hair, haircut should not be $40 for a bald person. <laughs> you know, this isn't right. I'm thinking that there should be a law. <laughs> you know? Oh, that's funny. So, the oh, un so this is the unbalanced mind. So the ego, yeah. these are the methods of the ego. An mm -hmm. attitude of this should not be. Mm hmm selective awareness mm -hmm. right only like by like bias right mm -hmm. 
and a hidden motive. And the hidden motive of we do recognize is to stay alive, just to stay alive, which is really important. But the body, the, the, the ego is claiming to be you and claiming to be the body, and it's claiming to be protective. So this, it's this hidden motive to keep you alive, to keep, stay alive for itself. It's also claiming to be you, but it's to stay alive. And the attitude of that it's always better to have control than it is to be healthy or sane. Oh, okay. Like the way to happiness is everything is to, is to control. Mm. And that I, I prefer control over sanity or health or reality. <laughs> wow. That's a realization that uh, I just now had that. I, yeah. Yeah. It's, Control so is a big this issue. is really the, this is basic. It's chapter four, but it's all over the place. Mm -hmm. That's why she can talk about chapter four. We can see it all over the place. Maybe it's even a little cringe, as, as Anne was saying this yeah, afternoon. Say, yeah. So the observation becomes to recognize that you're not yet sane. That you, mm -hmm. you 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 use there's parts of you that are still committed and wed to it's some insane ideas, mm -hmm. right? Because you do have selective awareness. You mm -hmm. you do hide motives from yourself. You do have you do recognize the attitude of this should not be, and and we often do act in ways of controlling in order to make ourselves feel better. That's mm -hmm. the answer is to control a physical thing. We recognize these things. Mm -hmm. So, and then she so the reminder is the very first sentence she said. She brings us back onto that can't be true. Mm -hmm. Reality is that all things work together for good. your good. So if you're not, we're not seeing it that way, if from chapter one, we're not seeing the miracle, then we're not really seeing, right? We're not really there. We're not really here. We're not seeing correctly or whatever. So that's, just, that's the dilemma. That's the dilemma. Mm -hmm. That's where we choose to participate in our own suffering or go back to sleep or just keep dreaming mm -hmm. instead of using these, recognizing the thought system when we or recognizing the structure of the ego's thought system because it's not a being it's a thought system it's not alive it's a thought system so be able to recognize that we can quicker and quicker let it go because we go oh i know what that load i don't i know the territory that goes to i don't want to go there right i just right. i'm going to drop it i don't need to figure mm -hmm. it out or make mm -hmm. me, you know make it mention myself or uh, you know all mm -hmm. this stuff. i can just let it go. It's like, oh, I recognize that. And without guilt, without thinking, I did it again, and now I'm back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back. I've been doing a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> right now, oh, here I am. I'm going down this road. Oops. Uh, no, I don't okay, want to do okay. that. Like, da, da, da. So, um, let's see if anybody yeah. put anything in the chat. Let's just see. Nope. Okay. okay. Let's go. Let's go back. Read a little bit for me, sweetie. All right. If you'll uh, get me there. Okay, a major source of the ego's off-balanced state is its lack of discrimination between the body and the thoughts of God. This may surprise you. Keep reading. Well, actually, that clarifies something for me. You know how sometimes when we say, or I, I used to say a lot, how do I distinguish between the voice of the ego and the, vo and the, you know, oh, the voice yeah. of God? Yeah. Um, a major source of the ego's off-balance state is its lack of discrimination between the body and the thoughts of God. It therefore tries to conceal not only unacceptable body impulses, <laughs> but also the thoughts of God, because both are threatening to, uh, to it, being primarily being concerned primarily with its own preservation in the face of threat. Any thought system that confuses God and the body must be insane. <laughs> Yet this confusion is essential to the ego, which judges only in terms of threat or non-threat to itself. Wow. See, it's a thought system. It is. It doesn't have to be fought. It just has to be seen through. Right. I mean, the major cause of our imbalance is, and we recognize this, did you hear it? Managing the threat. Mm -hmm. The main cause of what keeps us continually off balance is that I feel threatened and now I have to manage this threat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you were two steps into the, into the, in, away from the moment already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any, 
The major cause of unbalance is man is this belief in a dangerous world that has to be there has to be a managed threat, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so the so you remember? Let's go back to the what the ego's main tools are. Remember that from the first paragraph? Selective awareness, right? So the ego's main attribute is this should not be right. that control is peace. That's the <laughs> attribute. That's the attitude. This should not be. And that the method is control is peace. Mm. And she and uh, the ego uses selective awareness to suppress body impulses. Right, your learning device. I'm hungry. I'm you know I'm feeling this. I have tenseness. You know what your body impulses are just as dangerous as the thoughts of God. So in your mind. So your mind is a dangerous place, your body is a dangerous place, the material mm. world is a dangerous place. Mm. We have to use selective awareness to suppress all this danger. And the hidden motive is to stay is is it needs to stay alive. Because if it doesn't, we were talking about this earlier, we will be swept away by our body. You know, if I say I love you, I'll just like be swept away by these emotions and then I'll have to, you know, then you'll have control of me and I won't be myself anymore. You know, oh, my body, I'm just, if I give in to these feelings, I'll just be swept away and I won't be myself anymore. Mm. And I won't have autonomy and people will have control over me and they'll be able to make me do anything. Wow. Crazy. Mm. It's not sane. <laughs> and the mind is, I'll be swept away from God. And when, you, well, because we have had spiritual experiences that took us deep, deep, deep into the moment mm. and deep, deep, deep into healing. And it did feel like our, our egos were being swept away. The ego knows that it doesn't exist it's a collection of thoughts, of thoughts. and it's a mind system that we have we have uh, constructed because of a belief in living in a material world that is dangerous that doesn't support our happiness and we have to stay alive so the answer is of course to control the body <laughs> and to control the mind just control it Lock it like it's like 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 <laughs> and, and Blanchard said, lock it down, like lock it all down. So oh this answer is to control our bodies because the uh, uh, otherwise there's death, right? It's trying to control this threat of death to our bodies and to control the mind. It's trying to control presence and this knowledge from getting to us because we would be different people if we knew better, and the ego wouldn't be necessary. And we wouldn't be giving tax tasks to a thought system that didn't serve us. Mm. Do you see it? So the request becomes, and we were we've been talking about this, and Rhoda's message, I think, is a, was a direct pointing to this: become sensitive to our own feelings of threat, mm. not that they're real, not that they're actually going to, you know, actually going to happen, but oh, that uncomfortableness. Oh, I feel now, I feel threatened. She doesn't like me, or I didn't get what I wanted. Because if this happened, it means these people are going to ostracize me, or mm -hmm. I won't get what I want, or they're taking. I, this happened now. These things now. This this thing, this respect, has been taken away from me. Mm. Do we see it? Wow. This I, desire yeah. to control our body, to control our mm -hmm. mind, in order to uh, uh, so we don't events. get so we so we don't get swept away by these feelings in our body. We don't mm -hmm. get swept away by God. We can remain we can remain in control, mm -hmm. and that we aren't you know just subject to impulses, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Any thoughts in, going on in this here? Is yeah, fun. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, this is the really thoughts something. of God and the okay. body are the same threat to the ego. Uh, is that interesting? Uh, okay. All right. All right. So, so here we go. The next piece is the body is the ego's home by, by its, its own, own election. election. Like yeah. Okay. It is the only identification with which the ego feels safe since the body's vulnerability is its own best argument that you cannot be of God. <laughs> True. Yet the ego hates the body because it cannot accept Ugh. it as good enough to be its home. Right. The mind asks, where can I go for protection? To which the ego replies, turn to me. The mind, and not without cause, reminds the ego that it has itself insisted that it is identified with the body. So there is no Ooh. point in turning to it for protection. <laughs> Uh, it cannot be answered because it cannot okay, be asked. Okay, the question that okay. cannot be asked. Yeah, I, okay. I just want to get, there's, she tells you the construct, how the ego's thought system is constructed. Mm -hmm. The ego's thought system is constructed because 
we believe, truly, truly, truly believe that the material world is reality. And we act like it. And the end, that the ego's job is to shape this reality in to shape it and make it a less dangerous world. And it's our responsibility. The world, the way it looks, you know, it somehow needs to be, ah, got under control somehow. And the material world is dangerous. It's dangerous to my body. It's dangerous, just plain old dangerous, mm -hmm. right? And the solution is more of the material world. The solution is to, you know, is also in the material world. The solution is more things. Or different things, or different right. order of things, yeah. or different yeah. shape of things. Mm -hmm. Look, mm -hmm. she makes it very, she makes it very clear. Can you see this? A dangerous world cannot be less dangerous because it has a different form. If it's a dangerous world that makes a dangerous world, then choose, then changing the form doesn't change the dangerous world. It's absurd. It's offered the ego's offering an absurd solution. It actually removes the solution from our own awareness because it traps us into the, the solution is more things and just like keep working with the clay. No, I'm not a body. I'm free. It keeps us from even that kind of awareness, and it keeps us from understanding what level confusion is, where mm -hmm. to actually apply the awareness or the attention or whatever to actually relieve the suffering or learn or heal or grow, make something different. Where is the effective solution? Where is the answer? Where is the response? Where can I go? Where can I go? That's the unasked. That's the question that cannot be asked. Oh, so read this okay. next bit. So where can I go for protection? Meaningful seeking is consciously undertaking con undertaken, consciously organized, and consciously directed. Mm -hmm. The goal must be formulated clearly and kept in mind. Learning and wanting to learn are inseparable. You learn best when you believe that you are trying to, that what you try, are trying to learn is of value to you. Got it. Yeah. However, oh well, however not everything you may want to learn has lasting value. <laughs> <laughs> right. Surely you see that. Where can I go for protection? Okay. Uh -huh. Ah, she goes. Oh, so you're seeking. Mm. Oh, there's a where. <laughs> you're seeking. It's the beginning of the journey. Mm. Chapter four. We mm. start on this journey. I want to find out what I don't know. I want to live in the world I don't understand. I or you know I I'm going to go on this journey. Where can I? I have a seeking. Where do I go for protections? My first question, because I do feel threatened. I've created this dangerous world. The world says it's dangerous. I've, I participate in it. So she says, okay, if you want to seek for something different, you'll be consciously undertaking it. You will consciously be organized around it and you will consciously direct your thoughts and intentions toward it. If you're not doing that, I don't, really don't believe that you are seeking an answer to the protection. We're not, we want to keep dreaming and that's perfectly fine. But she goes, be, be conscious. Choose to be conscious. That's your first thing to do. Choose to want to be here. Remember and to remember what you do want. We talk around that. We talk about that a lot. What are your goals? What's your intent? Mm -hmm. you know, what's your ideals? What is your spiritual aspiration? aspiration? That's yeah. chapter three. Mm -hmm. What do, what, why, what, and she says it very clearly. So what do you, so what do you want to learn? What do you want to learn? By the way, the learning thing is always happening. <laughs> Teaching and learning is always happening. Right, so what do you want to learn? Mm -hmm. That's great. The beginning of the journey. What do you want to learn? <sighs> and she said, give attention to your creative desire. Give attention to what is yours to do instead of trying to control or figure out or manage a threat. What do you want to do, Padawan? What do you want to do, my child? <laughs> Read this last bit. We're done. Okay. Oh, I want to scroll too far. That's okay. Okay. Preoccupations with problems set up to be incapable of solution are favorite ego devices for <laughs> impeding learning progress. I love that. Preoccupations with problems set up to be incapable of solution. How, I mean, how many times have I done that? Impeding are, learning progress. Yeah, impeding <laughs> learning progress. In all these diversionary tactics, however, the one question that is never asked by those who pursue them is, what for? That's why Sacred Inquiry is so uh, wonderful. Uh -huh. it's, and it. it's so wonderful to watch Shauna sit here. Oh, oh gosh. Know. You know, what, what an example. Yeah, example of that. 
Uh, okay. This, this is, is the, the question, question that you must learn to ask in connection with everything. What everything. is the purpose? Whatever it is, it will direct your efforts automatically. <laughs> when you make a decision of purpose, then you have made a decision about your future effort. A decision that will remain in effect unless you change your mind. <laughs> There's a discussion of like the ego is really trying to create something of lasting value. Mm. And it can't. It, it, it can't because it's not creative, right? Because mm -hmm. it's a thought system that we buy into and organize and call it reality or society or culture or whatever we're doing. The ego cannot understand eternity. Mm. We're eternal. We're eternal truth, love, joy, and peace. We're everything that is real. We are, we are the miracle mm -hmm. of togetherness that creates all of reality. To the ego, eternity is a vampire. Because <laughs> it's a material thing that never dies. Right. But life in the body from life in the body forever, ever, ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The solution to any problem that the ego is going to offer is busyness with non-essentials, mm -hmm. futzing around the edges. When you don't know if it's a body-mind world solution or if it's a mind-spirit solution, ask yourself, what is this for? <laughs> what is this for? What am I doing uh, this for? Uh, uh. And be honest. Be honest. Be honest. Because it doesn't work if you're not honest. If it doesn't work if you want to hide things from your awareness. Mm. Be honest. Your answer will tell you what to do. Mm. What is your response? What is our response? Because this has a macro as well. Communities do this. Nations do this. What is our purpose? Where we put our effort and our creative attention is where the future goes. Where we put our effort and our creative attention for the future. Where are we doing that? Because this moment, this flow, this moment is your home. We don't occupy a, a single space. We are the flow of love and truth and reality. We keep, and she says, you, you can keep changing your mind. As you know and learn and change and grow, change, you can change your mind. Again and again and again, as we choose a better thought. Choose, be, become a better executive of your own mind and choose to believe that the world is, supports your happiness and that you can do this. The universe wants your happiness. Keep, and change your mind on the side of your own awakening mm. and do what's necessary. So, welcome to the journey. <laughs> welcome to the journey. I'm Reverend Glenn Morton Gano, your favorite anarchist preacher. This is the love <laughs> of my life, Reverend Yolanda, and you're yes, yes, uh, yes. listening to the Mighty Companions <laughs> Hour. We're so glad Hi, that Regina. you are here. Hey! <laughs> So, so tell us what tell us what this is, sweetie. Well, so I wanted to share a song like um let's see. Actually when we were studying Regina's uh teachings, um she made that statement in one of the um videos we were watching about uh letting go of whatever it was that had bothered her and then not even remembering it. Uh, and, and unless someone brought it up, you know, and I thought that was so profound. It really was like, wow, yeah. So uh, I'm going to play a video called uh, of my song called Let Go of Grievances. And uh, our friend Adam Shapiro is in this also. So here we go. <laughs> So my mind, my, my strength My hands, my feet, my everything My heart, my soul, my mind, my strength My hands, my feet, my everything A gift to Holy Spirit to bring miracles and blessings When I let go of grief and says just a little bit of willingness to accept forgiveness and we are free. Yeah. Let go of grief and says just a little bit of willingness to accept forgiveness and we are free. Miracles will come to me. Miracles. 
peace will come to me when I forgive the world. Miracles will come to me. Miracles will come to me when I forgive the world. When I let go of grievances, just a little bit of willingness to accept forgiveness, and we are free. Let go of grievances, just a little bit of willingness to accept forgiveness, and we are free. We are free. We are free. Let go of grievances, and we are free. We are free. We are free. Let go of grievances, and we are free. My soul, my mind, my strength, my hands, my feet, my everything. A gift to Holy Spirit to bring miracles and blessings. Miracles will come to me when I forgive the world. Miracles will come to me when I forgive the world. When I let go of grievances, just a little bit of willingness to accept forgiveness, and we are free. Let go of grievances, just a little bit of willingness to accept forgiveness, and we are free. We are free. We are free. Let go of grievances, and we are free. We are free. We are free. Grievances and we Sorry, so we can do announcements and get ready for it. Herein lies the peace of God, the final installment. I know, I'm looking forward to this. We've had, we've, had, we've had a good, we've had a good time. It's going to be great. And uh, thank you for joining us. And we'll be here in the sanctuary for the rest of the evening. So thank you so much.